Oh my YouTube world, this is Johnny Mo. You know what time it is, maintenance morning. You know what I do every every morning, seven o'clock, come out here, make sure these things are running tip top, check the blades, check the oil, make sure everything's running tip top, and make a note of anything that needs fixed also. Today, yesterday I had a uh, weed eater problem, so today I'm gonna do a video about how I fixed my two cycle equipment. After watching, uh, after watching uh, Top Notch's video, I figured I would do a video on how I handle all my two cycle equipment. So stay tuned. Hello YouTube world, this is Johnny Mo coming to you with a video on some tips and tricks on how I fix my two cycle. Um, <clears throat> first of all, as we all know, ethanol is destroying everything. Uh, these two cycles cannot handle this ethanol fuel um, so <clears throat> you constantly either you're gonna have to get carburetors which here's a carburetor on my shop wall there's a carburetor right there I just keep them in stock because I know they're gonna go so here's some of the tips and tricks that I use when I have issues with my weed eaters and my blowers here is one of the tricks if it doesn't have enough power the first thing I check is this. This is the spark arrester right here, this little screen, which mine is plugged. I noticed it the last two days that it didn't want to start very well, and when it does start, it was bogging down. So I'm going to rip this out of here, and we're going to get rid of it completely. Now, if you live in a very dry area with dry grass, you might want to be careful because if this sparks through and gets through, it might ignite grass, and you could have wildfires and all kinds of things. Here's a second tip that I use. Cleaning carburetors. I am not one. I used to rip them all down and try to figure out which jet was plugged and this and that. I don't do that anymore. <clears throat> the carburetors are cheap. These are 26 bucks. This is a Husqvarna 323L. I'll show you a little trick that I use to clean the carburetor. And if this trick doesn't work, I just replace it. So what I'll do is I'll start it up. I'll open up a little can of seafoam and I'll dump it in here. What will happen is it'll stall, okay? Once it stalls, you let it alone for 15 minutes. That means this is getting into the jets and ports. Give it a chance to clean it out. If you start it back up and it starts up, you just saved yourself 23 bucks. It does work. I've had it work, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the jets are just way too plugged or the diaphragm's way too bad. So, having said that, I get my carburetor off the wall, I'll take this cover off, I'll rip it out, and there she goes. That's it. That's how I clean and deal with carburetors. Another tip and trick that I use is these Husqvarna's, they heat up pretty hot when it gets 90 degrees. So what I do is I don't use this trimmer two times in a row. So if I'm trimming a property out, I grab the other one, <clears throat> go to the trailer, you got you got a spare back there on top of my plow. You can see how organized I've been Now in the trailer I have two There's one right there and you have the one that I'm fixing right now, and then you have the echo Right there now I use the echo when I'm knocking down something big uh, These 323s are good, but they don't have a lot of power for the the big stuff and you know Just nothing you can do about it but it'll rip around the house really quick, does fine. But if you want to get into a big ditch, it's grass is two foot tall, uh, you have to go get the 266T. And <clears throat> so what I do is I'll interchange them throughout the day. Now, if I had a crew, I'd put a third one over there, like I did last year. I'd put a third one. That way you just keep interchanging them. That way you give them time to cool down. That goes with any of your two cycle equipment. Um, I personally like the 323Ls, they're light. They're good enough to do what I'm doing. I'm very pleased with them. Um, and they're pretty cheap. So, there's your tip. Johnny Mo tip, baby. You getting the tips. Tips on a Friday. Uh, so back to this. So this is exactly what you wanna do. You want to be able to <clears throat> diagnose and clean it yourself. If it's running poorly, sometimes this, this spark plug can get jammed up. Um, on my wall somewhere, there's a box up oh, there, up there, NG keys. There's a box of spark plugs for these. I will rip these out and I'll put another one in. Um, very easy to fix. You know, don't even waste time 
trying to break them apart and pull them out, make sure the diaphragm goes back in right and all that. They're cheap, 30 bucks. Uh, I will say that the ethanol fuel, I've done 93 with ethanol and I've done 87 without ethanol. Um, I found the 93 with ethanol has seemed to work pretty good. I still had a lot of issues when I went 87 without ethanol, and plus it's 466 a gallon here, whereas, you know, 93 is what, 305? And I only buy, I only buy four gallons at a time. You don't want it sitting around all the time and letting it go a month. I'll show you a little, another little trick that I use dealing with ethanol. <clears throat> You guys probably already know this, but maybe some of you don't. Some of you newbies. When I when I go to mix this, when I go to pour it in, I always shake it. In case ethanol has phased out and it's separated from the gas, I always shake it to make sure that everything's mixed real well. And then I put it in. I don't just grab it and go dumping. Another tip for you. So that's about all I have. Let's review real quick. This will help you get you in through a pinch. First thing you want to check if you're losing power is check your spark arrestor. If it's clogged, take it out. If you live in a cool, dry area, clean it and put it back in. Um, if you, I live in a cooler area. We're not in a drought, so I don't really care about the the emissions. The emissions come out of California. Who cares? They're just they're just ridiculous with emissions. They're ruining all of our equipment. Uh, next thing, if it does, if it's not that, you want to rip this. Take your filter off. Dump some seafoam in the carburetor, let it sit for 15 minutes, come back, start it up. If it's running rough, but it's running, there's adjustments on here. As you can see, there's some adjustments right there. I bought these tools off Amazon. I can adjust any carburetor. I got them off, I think, Pac-Man, so I can adjust every... These, these one, two, three, four tools will help me adjust this carburetor. What I do is I adjust the high first. The low generally doesn't need adjusted. Maybe a little bit. I adjust the high. I get it cranking. Put it back. Now I do have to adjust these in different seasons. Right now it's really hot and humid so it's going to need a little bit uh, leaner of a mix or, <clears throat> or a thicker mix because it, it's, it can scream when it's really this hot out. So I, I kind of adjust that high a little bit and I only have to adjust it about twice a year. Sometimes when I have to clean the carburetor out, it does get a little bit junked up. But those are my tips and tricks on dealing with ethanol. Uh, I don't waste my time going to get ethanol, non-ethanol fuel because I had the same, because I did it for two years and I was buying the same amount of carburetors regardless. So I figured, hey, what's the difference? If I'm gonna buy a carburetor, might as well use cheaper gas, save the money. If I wasn't using the carburetors, um, then that would be different. I've only had to replace one carburetor in these. Now, I do have a spare up there, which is nice, but I'm very pleasantly surprised. Now, when I use the, the Echoes, the 266T, man, it seemed like I was going through about two carburetors a year. I don't know what the deal was, but for whatever reason, these things here seem to be lasting longer, and I like that. So that's my tips and tricks. Um, on dealing with ethanol and dealing with trying to diagnose your weed eaters. Thanks guys.